There are three things that we can measure when looking at waves. Wave speed, frequency, and wavelength. Now, wave speed is how quickly a wave travels through a medium or substance. Frequency is how many waves pass a point per second. And wavelength is the distance between two identical points on neighbouring waves. Now, these are all related in one equation, that wave speed equals frequency times wavelength. Now, wave speed is measured in metres per second, and wavelength is measured in metres. Frequency is measured in hertz, which simply means per second. Now, when we're looking at waves in liquids, we often use a ripple tank to help us do that, and that's what we've got here. A ripple tank is simply a shallow tray with a clear bottom, and in this example, we've put a piece of white paper underneath so we can see the effects more clearly. So a wave is simply a vibration that travels, and we need to give a vibration to the water. And to do that, we're going to use a dipper. Now, the dipper is connected to a power pack, which gives it its energy. The higher the voltage of the power pack, the more quickly the dipper will vibrate, and the higher the frequency of the wave it produces. If I turn it on, you can see that some waves are being created. As I turn up the voltage, the number of waves created per second increases. As I turn down the voltage, it decreases. It's quite tricky to get the right amount so you can see the waves and still measure things. So, as you can see, these waves have got quite a high frequency and a small wavelength. It's quite difficult to take measurements right now because they're moving and your eyes don't work that quickly. So one way to measure the wavelength of the wave is to take a photograph using a camera or a mobile phone. As long as you take a picture which includes a ruler in the shot, like this, you'll be able to work out the distance between two neighbouring peaks of waves, and that's the wavelength. The frequency is slightly harder still. Frequency is how many times a wave passes a point in one second. So really, all you should need to do is count the number of waves that pass a point per second. But that's a lot, and this is very fast. To be more accurate, you should count the number of waves that pass a point in 10 seconds and then divide it by 10. But that's still quite difficult here because it's still moving quickly. So one way to combat this is to use a video camera or a phone that can video. If you video this and then play it back in slow motion, you should be able to count the number of waves in 10 seconds and divide by 10 to find the frequency. One word of warning, make sure that you are videoing the stop clock at the same time because you need to know how long 10 seconds is on your slow motion version. Once you've got these two values, all you need to do is multiply them together to find the wave speed because wave speed equals frequency times wavelength. Now, once you've done that, you might want to try it for different frequencies and wavelengths. And we do that by changing the frequency of the dipper by changing the voltage of the power pack. Now, as you can see, as I've increased the voltage, the frequency has increased, but the wavelength has decreased. Now, you can find out whether the wave speed has remained constant or changed by applying the equation. This is one way of measuring wave speed, wavelength and frequency in a liquid.